Rosalind Harris is a waitress who works two jobs just trying to make ends meet so that she can pay her college tuition fees. During one of the busiest weekends of the year, she was working her shift at the Washington restaurant Buzz Boys and Poets when a group of Saxon men walked in with their conspicuous red hats, sticking out like a sore thumb in that particular establishment with its very laid back, unbiased, artistic vibe that is known for being a meeting place for civil rights activists, artists, and poets. Rosalind's first thought was they might be looking for trouble, particularly as it was an emotionally charged weekend for the whole country. At first, the 25-year-old waitress was instinctively nervous about serving them and hoped they weren't there to make any trouble for her or for the other customers. She would find out soon enough if her instincts were true gut feelings or based on ideas that she intuitively based on their image. This wasn't the first time that Rosalind had encountered trouble in a restaurant, but these men were on another level of intimidating and spooky. After a while, she realized that her initial thoughts may not have been fair. Rosalind believed that she had a good sense for people, having worked as a waitress for so long and around so many people on an intimate level. She still exercised a certain measure of caution around the men, however, as she could not hide all her fears. But she still wasn't expecting what she found on the table. She couldn't believe her eyes. Rosalind Harris is not an average waitress, and she has a lot more to offer than just waiting on tables. Not that this is not a respectable issue by any means, but Rosalind was working very hard at her life after hours. She is passionate about social justice, fitting for someone who works at the Washington, D.C. restaurant Buzz Boys and Poets, where there are ethnic minority role models plastered on the walls. There are so many people that are invested. The establishment is a self-proclaimed community where racial and cultural connections are consciously it was, a, it was a clash of two polar worlds, where the left and the right rarely mixed, and if so, you could bet that there would be trouble. Was a bar fight about to explode? The 25-year-old is a professional dancer, and her work as a waitress is a means to an end, a way to put herself through college. She works hard, and the last thing she wanted was for any customer drama to occur. Not only would she be risking her customer safety within her joint, but a very livelihood itself. If she did not deal with these strange men that she was serving before they started something, she could take the blame. The weekend that this unexpected incident took place is significant to the story. It was the weekend of two majorly important marches in Washington that weekend. The inauguration of the 45th president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, and the Women's March. If you know anything about politics, you may have guessed that these two movements did not see eye to eye. The Women's March members were scathingly critical of Trump, who was infamous for his sexist remarks. Funnily enough, both parties in our story were at a march that weekend, but while those in the red hats were at the inauguration, Rosalind was at the Women's March. You see, Rosalind is an outspoken and passionate feminist, among many other things. She was also not the biggest Trump fan, so when these men walked in wearing those infamous red MAGA hats, she instantly took against them. They were mortal enemies, after all, and they were on her turf. Rosalind was one of the 500,000 who turned up to march in the rally to stick up for her beliefs. Once the busy weekend was over, many visitors stayed in the capital city for the following week. One such visitor was Jason White from Texas and his friends. There were many people in the capital city at that time, from all walks of life with many different political beliefs. While everyone was largely coexisting with only a few violent moments, things were tense. It was a fateful lunchtime for both parties that day as they would both learn a lot. When Jason and his friends walked into Busboys and Poets, the place went silent, looking at the group in disbelief, including Rosalind. It was like something from a movie where the happy-go-lucky protagonist and his friends walk into a biker gang bar, and all the thugs silently stare at them. Only this time, the Trump supporters had walked into a liberal den. Rosalind immediately made two quick assumptions about the small group. Firstly, that they had come from out of town, and secondly, that they were in Washington to celebrate the inauguration of the new president. She may have been reaching, but there were so many glaringly obvious signs. Namely, that a group of Trump supporters had no idea what Rosalind's left-wing cafe was, given that they had casually strolled in. And these gentlemen were clearly out of their depths. Although Rosalind may have been right on both accounts, when people see Trump supporters, they often assume that they are bigoted, aggressive, or worse, members of a far-right group. Not everyone wearing a MAGA hat is an extremist. Jason White and his friends had indeed come all the way from Texas to celebrate the election results in the capital city as they were thrilled by the turnout. In that respect, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the group was casually walking around in their red Make America Great Again. 
uncaps, especially as Jason is not ashamed of his proud patriotism. He believed that it was only right that an American should support their president. Yet just because those two assumptions about Jason White may have been true, there is still so much more to him than just a red cap. He just happened to be wearing it in the wrong place at the wrong time. Still, this was just an accidental fashion No, no, that Jason had pulled off. He was certainly a big supporter of the president to be, as were his friends. But did that mean that he was a racist? The 37-year-old is a big family man with a close-knit network of friends and a disc back in his hometown in Texas. He is a completely normal individual with a normal life. He has no crime record and his friends, family members, and co-workers all think highly of him. When visiting the capital city, he also visited the tomb of the unknown soldier in the Arlington Cemetery to name a few. This was meant to be a patriotic pilgrimage of sorts. To be honest, the red caps caught everyone's eye first as they just seemed so out of place in such an establishment. Rosalind didn't say anything to them about the caps, but Jason quietly suggested to the others that they take them off while they were having lunch in the restaurant. As you can imagine, it didn't take him long to realize that his kind was not particularly welcome in an establishment like this one. Jason said that when they went inside to sit down, they started getting looks. I told my friend, you need to take your hat off. I don't want people to think we're coming in here to flaunt dot dot bot. We're just coming here to have lunch. Jason was astute enough to realize that this was a safe space where the only political stances that were welcomed or discussed were on the left side of the overall political spectrum. Incredibly, if Rosalind was disturbed by the men's appearance, she did not show it. She was in an incredible mood and nothing could shake her. Rosalind was still buzzing from the high energy she got from the powerful women's march and was especially cheery as she walked over to Jason's table to give them service, handing them the menus with a big smile, which they warmly reciprocated. The men were relieved to see her friendliness, to say the least. And soon enough, they were making jokes together. Jason said that she had laughed when they said they were from West Texas, saying that she evidently could tell they were from the South. Then he asked Rosalind what was her favorite thing on the menu, and when she said the avocado panini was delicious, he ordered that as he loves avocado too, saying that it was a relief for both of us to just laugh together. After they broke the ice a little, Jason wondered about the restaurant bookstore's history and asked Rosalind about it. She was only too happy to answer their questions, being sure they had never experienced a place quite like it. While many people will feel that those with an opposing political stance should simply be fought, Rosalind was of the mind that warmth and open conversations are the best way forwards. She was not about to turn hostile. Rosalind told the three men that busboys and poets were named after poet Langston Hughes, a key figure in African-American literature, as he used to be a busboy in the 1920s before he gained recognition for his work. Hughes produced an extensive collection of news articles, poems, novels, and even plays in his time and was the pioneer of the jazz poetry form. He was a cultural, show, and political icon who today holds a legendary status. After taking their orders, Rosalind let the group enjoy their lunch, thinking that that would probably be the end of the encounter. But was it? There was perhaps far more to their encounter than just pleasantries and an enjoyable square meal for the MAGA men. Rosalind had a strange feeling she carried on with her work after introducing the men to the place. After all, it was an unusual encounter for both parties involved. An hour or so later, Jason and his friends finished their lunch and left the restaurant after saying thank you and goodbye from afar. Rosalind would have liked to have seen the guys off properly and thank them for their patronage. Of course, Rosalind now went over to the table to clean up for the next customers and collect any tip they may have left. Nothing could have prepared her for what was to come. When Rosalind arrived at the table to clean up and pick up the check, she noticed it was covered in words. At first, she thought it was just a careless scribble until she looked a little closer and it became clear that one of the friends had written a note. What could they possibly have had to say to Rosalind? As friendly as their interaction had been, it was just a waitress serving customers at the end of the day. Rosalind's curiosity began to burn as she skimmed over the note. She looked around to see if the men had stuck around, but they were well on their way by that point. Rosalind picked up the note and started to read. After the first few words, she realized this was a personal message specifically for her and got her interest in the first few words we may come from different cultures and may disagree on certain issues. With each sentence, Rosalind felt more and more moved by the heartfelt message. The note went on to say, if every woman would share a smile and kindness like your beautiful smile, our country will come together as one people Jason wrote, not race, not gender, just American. 
God bless Rosalind was at a loss for words. She could never have expected that people so different from her would appreciate her basic courtesies and pleasantries so gratefully. Rosalind was tr truly touched by Jason's note. The idea of how far a smile can go really invigorated her positivity. Waitresses will generally have all manner interactions with people. Some good, some very rarely will they experience a life-changing moment like, like this one. But there was so much more to come for Rosalind, whose experience had just begun. There was so much more amazingness to come. She wasn't prepared for what came next. And the total cost of the check for the three's lunch came in at $72.60. So Rosalind was utterly astounded when she saw they had left a tip of a whopping $450. For a waitress, any tip above 20% is exciting, but 625% was just unbelievable. As everyone knows, waitresses often do not earn luxurious salaries in any country or state. They work incredibly hard for very little pay and often have to survive on tips alone. Jason said that the $450 tip was a nod to the inauguration of the 45th President of the United States, Trump, as a symbolic gesture that he hoped everyone could move forward together. This tip was so much more than money. It was a way forward for people of all walks of life and political beliefs to finally begin respecting and caring for one another. Of course, there was a lot of work to be done to reach that stage. Jason hadn't even told his friends what he was doing. This was not some grand scheme that he and his pals had come up with. Rather, it was a spontaneous gesture that Jason had thought up after meeting the warm waitress. But he felt so moved by everything that he had seen in Washington over the weekend with both the election of the president and the powerful women's march. Two walks of life with one goal. Jason remembers looking at all those influential figures on the walls of the busboys and poets establishment and thinking about how the inauguration and the ween march coincided and being inspired as for him. These were two examples of people expressing their American values. Suddenly, Jason was thinking in new ways that he had never considered before. It seemed like there was so much for him to learn from the living and departed figures in this world influenced also by being a devout Christian. Jason felt these two events represented the very foundation of what it meant to be American. He also said that he was so moved when he watched the guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier, thinking about how, no matter who the president is and regardless of politics, they perform the same 21-step tradition. America had changed so much in just a few years, and Jason was doing his best to keep up. This thought inspired Jason and he began thinking about how much he had in common with other people, even if on the first impression that may not be so obvious. This included the smiling waitress who served him with a Jason said that he wanted to show Rosalind that they probably had more in common than first appearances may show. Jason said in an interview that while he was sitting there thinking about the whole weekend he had just experienced, he thought about how if most Americans have preconceived opinions of one another, then we're never going to get better, he said. And to put it simply, don't judge a book by its cover or face value. Both of the lovely heartfelt words and the hefty tip were such wonderful gestures that Rosalind felt extremely touched and emotional. Rosalind said how one often automatically makes assumptions that if someone supports Trump that they have certain ideas. But she was pleasantly surprised that Jason was more embracing than even some of my more liberal friends. And there was a real authenticity in our exchange, she said. And the man had left with much personal growth. Not only were the words extremely moving for Rosalind, there was also no denying that the generous tip came at a perfect time for her. She had just taken on extra shifts because she had to move apartment and didn't know if she'd have enough cash to pay any upfront costs. So the $450 tip is a huge weight off my shoulders, she said. This might not seem like much money to a person that earns well. Rosalind said that she may have been guilty of prejudice too and the men had left her with more than a generous tip. It reminded her that many Americans want unity regardless of their politics and not to be afraid to connect with someone as human beings. And she said, and that the event definitely reshaped my perspective. Republican, Democrat, liberal are all subcategories to what we are experiencing, she said. It instills a lot hope the two's reunion was yet to come. Even though neither Rosalind or Jason posted any information about the exchange on social media, it soon went viral after a co-worker Rosalind's put a photo of the receipt on Twitter. Soon enough, the, the two finally got to catch up after everything they had been through since then. They laughed and exchanged pleasantries, but there was a far more serious point that would soon arise in their discussion. It seemed like some of their followers had missed the point of their exchange. During their conversation, they both agreed 
that there was an important misunderstanding that many people had about the story. But how would they clear up the confusion? Um, many had been incorporating the story in a manner in which neither Rosalind or Jason agreed with. Rosalind said that she really hoped that people don't just see this act of kindness as this white guy helping this black girl. Saying that this gracious gesture came from a place of compassion and love, Jason agreed, saying that it wasn't about him or Rosalind specifically, but that he wanted to set an example for all people, that they should stop and think a little bit before they judge people on all sides. Both Rosalind and Jason see their exchange as a lesson of unconditional love for a stranger, whoever they may be, and whatever they look like. Jason said, we have to think about being better Americans. We have to look into ourselves and how we treat one another, he said. If everyone did a little something to show respect, we can love one another at the end of the heartfelt FaceTime call. Rosalind said a virtual hug to Jason, and he responded by blowing a virtual kiss. Rosalind reached out to Jason after seeing him on the news a few weeks later, and they reconnected. They talked about their political differences and how they could still have a friendship despite their disagreements. Over various dinners, Rosalind and Jason engaged in political debates that got heated at times. They both realized how passionate they were about their beliefs, but also respected each other's opinions. After several friendly conversations, Jason asked Rosalind out on a date. She hesitated at first, unsure if their political differences would be too much to handle, but she decided to give it a chance. Rosalind's friends and family were initially skeptical of her dating a Republican Trump supporter, but Jason's kindness and respect for her beliefs helped them see him in a different light. Jason met Rosalind's parents and was nervous about their reaction to his political views, but they were impressed by his manners and willingness to listen to their opinions. Rosalind and Jason hit their first major obstacle when a controversial political issue caused a heated argument. They both realized they needed to find a way to respect each other's beliefs without letting it damage their relationship. After their argument, Rosalind and Jason decided to take a break from each other to think about whether they could overcome their political differences. It was a difficult time, but it gave them both the space to evaluate their feelings. After their break, both Rosalind and Jason dated people who shared their political beliefs. However, those relationships didn't work out as they found themselves missing the connection they had with each other. After a few weeks, Rosalind and Jason met up to talk things through. They considered whether they should give their relationship another chance, eventually left having made no decisive decisions, but they both wondered. As time went on, Rosalind and Jason couldn't help but think about each other. They missed the deep conversations they had, the laughter they shared, and the unique bond they had formed despite their political differences. One day, Rosalind and Jason heart-to-heart -heart conversation and both admitted that, that they still had feelings for each other. They realized that they had a special connection that couldn't be found with someone who shared the same political beliefs. After their realization, Rosalind and Jason decided to take a chance on each other once again. They knew that it wouldn't be easy, but they were willing to work through their differences and find a way to make it work. As they got back together, Rosalind and Jason made a commitment to learn and grow from each other. They respected each other's beliefs and took the time to understand where the other was coming from. Despite the challenges they faced, Rosalind and Jason were determined to make their relationship work. They found common ground and focused on the things they loved about each other rather than in their political differences. And through their struggles and perseverance, Rosalind and Jason's bond grew even stronger. They realized that their love for each other was more important than any political beliefs, and they made sure to prioritize their relationship above all else. After a few years of dating, Jason proposed to Rosalind. It was a joyous moment for both of them and they couldn't wait to start their life together. Planning their wedding was a challenge as they had to navigate the politics of their families and friends, but they remained committed to each other and found a way to compromise. Rosalind and Jason's wedding day was a beautiful celebration of their love. They exchanged vows and danced the night away, surrounded by loved ones who supported their relationship. After their wedding, Rosalind and Jason went on a romantic honeymoon to a tropical island. They relaxed and enjoyed each other's company, grateful for the love they had found.